where I grew up in the yes. village in Jordan, Jordan yeah. Valley. It's 15 minute walk from River Jordan. If I visit my grandmother, I will sit down with her in the kitchen. And sometimes she's cooking and singing at the same time. So I will sit there, just watch her cooking. Or There's a lot of things happening in the kitchen. Yeah. And I think it's in every culture. And do you miss all of that family being here? So much. Really? I love London and I think I built, I did build here my own mm -hmm. family because you know, I met so many people. I met some, especially starting a business and, and also being connected to your culture, even if you are in a different country, you know, being yourself and talking to people about your culture and, for example, cooking food from yeah. your country. For me, it's, it's a way to connect to other people. Some people will find it, oh, I need to be a little bit br more British, but actually not, if you are yourself you connect faster mm -hmm. because it's, it's honest and natural. Yes, yeah, yeah. There must have been something that that place didn't have, otherwise you wouldn't have left. Was it just opportunities? Life in, yeah. in general because... What's outside the door? I want to make the most out of it. I want to live my life and learn and grow. I will never forget it and I will always come back. One day, you know, I will buy a house or buy a farm for myself. In every culture you have, the society expects things from you. So my father told me that, keep going, doesn't matter what people say or what people think, if you believe in something, if you imagine it, if you see it and you think it's right, just do it. If I do the same thing every day, sometimes you need to do something for six months to learn it. And I, I see myself as a, someone who learns very slowly. If I learn it, then what's next? What's next? I can't just do it all yeah. the time. Yeah. And have you got a big dream for what you're doing? Probably if I tell you what is my dream now, you will laugh. Never. Okay, tell me. I imagined myself three years ago no. that I will do something big like yesterday. Yes. And I had people telling me it will never happen. You're imagining. And I said, no, it's going to happen. You know, I have my dream and I, I found something that I'm, I really love doing. And going through the, the, the options of how I can make it happen and speaking to this person and waiting that person for months to get a response from that person, asking that person and this person say no, then you go to the next one and the third one and, and, and so. And just persevering. And, and also, you, you it, now my business is not only about food, selling food. It's more of an event, isn't it? And you can turn that into anything. Exactly, yeah. and also you know meeting people who are doing products, and mm -hmm. so I, I I have a dream to develop my own products now, which is based on Arabian flavors. Catering business in London, there is, for example, there isn't much of Middle Eastern catering. There is Middle Eastern no from okay. restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. Restaurant there is plenty. I will be working with a chef. He will join me. He's from Colombia, so he cooks amazing Colombian food. Wow, Colombian Middle Eastern fusion. So we basically we will cook what we love cooking, yeah. you know, yeah. and also it's just food. Exactly, doesn't need a name. Food is great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I did I archaeology in Jordan, and I always been in love with the culture and the history of my country and the area. When I came to London, I wanted to start a career here, but I wasn't sure what I want to do. But then I I when I go to the market weekends go to Oxford Circus for example and used to see these small stalls selling food and I thought what if I start selling my mom's stuffed vine leaves there when you see a stall and they're selling falafel yes. it's good yes. but I, I, I knew my mom's one yeah, yeah. great yeah. so I come home and I think I, I had these deep thoughts I hated the, the idea of doing the same job every day five days a week yes. when I decided I want to have a food business, I googled online mm -hmm. and how to start a food business. And one of the things that one of the things that I saw I love online, that, that everything started with a Google. Search. It's true actually. I Google. So Princess Trust Business uh, Enterprise Program mm -hmm. was there. So I sent them an email and I thought they will maybe they will never respond. And I didn't really know what the Princess Trust is mm -hmm. at that time. I just found them and I emailed them. They responded to me in like two hours yeah. and they told me about their enterprise program and I joined. It was February, uh, January 2014 and we started, we were about 20 people. And I remember the lady, Rebecca, told us that 
by the end of the course and going through the year of mentoring and uh, doing the business plan, three or four of you will stay till the end because actually running a business and starting a business is not, the idea of it is great, but it's, it's hard work. Mm -hmm. And that's why they advise people to do 16 hours job in a week, two days a week, part time. I didn't do that. Right. I needed okay, money. So, right. Okay. To keep the money coming in. Yeah. To keep the money coming in, so and then they have, have more time. time. Yeah, and they have time because when you start a business, you need money. Yes. But if if I want to start a business, then I need enough time to plan for it. I say they have a part time business, but at that time, it was almost full time. I just took my holidays. Okay. Princess Trust introduced me to my mentor, and mentors normally they volunteer in the Princess Trust. Peter Upton. He's great. We're still in touch. We had our first proper meeting on the 19th of February, I think. And I remember that day I cried because I was like, what am I going to do? I don't know what to do because there was so many information that I received from that course. Tax and this and that and that and that. And uh, When do you cook? You've got all the tax to do. and At night. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at night. Because the first year what I did was just market research. Right. The idea was to have a small shop, but then I realized it's too expensive. I was so naive. And then the idea was a store. What does it cost to have a shop in London? I think, I would say minimum 100,000. A year? Yes. I mean, it depends on the location yes. and everything, but I think it is a lot of money. Wow. It is. Yeah. It, um, there is some locations are cheaper than the yeah. other, and sometimes you get some luck yeah. in some locations, but it, it's it's expensive. Even if I had the money at that time, yes. it, w it wouldn't be right for me because I've never worked in a kitchen. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that my mentor advised me to do, is to start a job somewhere. And, and get it, some experience. Yeah, some so the first place I went to was Otilengi, one of the best food in London. I didn't even know. Holding a knife at home and cutting slowly is one thing, but in a kitchen is a completely different thing. It requires speed and safety. Because mm -hmm. I didn't know how to hold it properly. You right. need to do your fingers like this and then hold it in a... So I remember I was working next to the head chef and she was watching my hands and I thought, okay, it's fine. I should need to show the passion and that's all. But it's a busy kitchen. So they, they didn't offer me to come again because mm -hmm. I needed more practice, mm -hmm. maybe do a uh, work experience in a less busy kitchen so I can get the basics of working in a, in a commercial kitchen. How did that feel? You worked there for a week? It was week. so overwhelming because, you know, it's, it's something happening. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh my God, I'm in the kitchen, chefs screaming, cooking, laughing, music there. Smoke there. I cut like 10 boxes of aubergine that day. It was great. But then when they said, no, they can't, I can't go anymore, I was so sad. That's when I approached Honey & Co. It's very brave because if I wanted to be a chef, I would think I could go and do a two-year chef course. You just go and get a job in the kitchen. In three months, I've done everything. You know, you clean, you do everything because I wanted to learn how to pick parsley very fast, everything. And in six months time, I started running a whole service. So I grew fast there and I was still doing my own uh, catering on the side. Wait. I used to do supper clubs in my days off. And also Sunday, Honey & Co close. So that's the day when I do my preparation yeah. for any other supper clubs coming. So you work seven days a week? Yes. Wow. I remember one day I had a a small wedding party and I was working at Honey & Co that day, Saturday, 8, finishing at 5, but it was a bit busy so I had to finish 5.30. So what I did the day before, Friday, I stayed awake all night doing the preparation and then I hired someone to deliver the food because I wanted to keep it in the fridge and everything to deliver the food at 4 o'clock from my house to the venue. So as soon as I finished my job at Honey Co, I ran there and wow. I was a bit late. By 10 o'clock I was done. So home, straight away, sleeping, 
next day I woke up like one. You're working seven days a week, you're working, working full days, leaving at half five and going on to another job. A lot of people want the success but they don't realise. I want it and I still want to do it but sometimes it get, makes me doubt. Yes. Because especially when you have a social life and you, you know you want to meet your friends and you want to do this but I have to do this and I have to do this. Then you feel like, am I doing the right thing? And you're willing to make the effort because you know it's the only way you can achieve your goal. Now, after, especially after doing the wedding yesterday, the catering for the wedding, uh, I'm reducing the hours uh, with my job because I want to focus more. Because now I think the goal is for this mm -hmm. year is to do my business full time. The first year when I was thinking about where is the right platform for me to start selling mm -hmm. food, my mentor helped me to realize that having a food stall is a good idea. We found out about street food called Carol. I contacted them online and I said, I found Petra. Petra Baron is the yeah. founder of Carib Street Food. Yeah. I sent her an email and I thought, she might never read it. May go to the spam or yeah. something. My name is Batul, I'm from Jordan and I would like to have a stall at your market. I cook Jordanian food. Looking forward to hearing back. In half an hour. She responded and she said, well, I love Jordanian food. And I called and she was, she emails me first saying that she's going to be busy today, next week, next week comes, she's busy again. And then one day I was doing my, I was doing an English course. I was in the middle of my final exam and she was free. So she called me. During the exam? Yes. And then the professor looked at me and I looked at him. I said, please, I need to answer this phone call. He wasn't happy at all. He looked at me like this. And then I said, I have to go, I have to go. And I, I ran outside, the rain finished. So I had to call and I was like, oh my God, it was an opportunity for me to speak to her. So I called her straight away and she answered. Does she know the story? I don't think she know. So, so what she said to me, okay, Batul, I would love to try your food and we would love to have you at Kerb. But what do you think the best way for us to, to try your food? And I said, well, I can cook and come to your office. She said, no, this is a difficult, this is difficult. I wanted to secure Petra. I wanted, I wanted to make sure that Petra try my food. So I wanted to, to give her a time, a place. I told her, well, I'm doing a, a tasting, event, tasting event at the end of this month. And I wasn't doing any tasting event. <laughs> And she said, I didn't even plan, I didn't even thought the idea was born in that moment. That's brilliant. And she said, okay, when is that? And I thought it was last week of May, it was the beginning of May, but I think end of April. And she said, okay, cool, I'm in London. Because she, she told me I'm, I'm away in June. So the best time for you is in May. I told her, well, end of May. And then I told her, well, we are still, uh, I'm still discussing with the venue which day, but which day do you think it works for you the best? She said, well, avoid Friday and Monday, but Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is perfect for her. And I said, okay. That's and why I'm get, having it. Yeah, and then I told her, well, I get in touch with you next week and mm -hmm. give you the, the time. She said, yes, let me know as soon as possible. And I finished the call, went to the, finished the exam, the exam was just finish it and then I had I had no venue, no plan, nothing. I didn't know what to do. I just googled online and I call venues and uh, community centers in London and they're all very expensive. The cheapest one I found near St. Luke, in, it's called St. Luke Community Center near Old Street mm -hmm. Station. And they told me it's 300 pounds for two hours. Wow. And for a community centre. Yeah. And then they said to me, you have to pay today, deposit if you want to secure it. And I had, so I was going there knowing if I pay that money, I will not be able to pay my rent. But you got to do it anyway. I had to. I had to. Because all I was, all I saw that day is a toolie stall in Curb Street Food. Mm -hmm. And I lost my way to go to St. Luke. When I lost my way, I found a community center called Weisbad or Visbad. I went inside and uh, I thought, I asked him about uh, the hall there. And they gave me a number for someone called Peter. 
to call him. I called him and I said to him, uh, do you rent your hall for events? My name is Batur and I want to do this and this and this. How much it costs per hour? And he said, 15 pound an hour. And I was like, sorry, five zero. He said, no, one five. And I was, yes, I will take it. Tomorrow I'm coming and I will pay you. And he said, don't worry. Anyway, I secured a venue. That is amazing. Now I start thinking about a kitchen and I wanted to invite more people because I wanted the event to look like, you know, there's people there. So I contacted so many people to come, obviously friends and friends of friends. And then I found a kitchen in Hendon. It was the cheapest kitchen I found online, 10 pound an hour. And I did the event. I, I, at that time I thought, okay, I'm 40 people came. So I thought, okay, 40 people coming, then okay, take me one hour to cook for two people. So six hours is gonna be enough. More than enough. So I went there, I arrived at the kitchen at 10 o'clock, cooking, cooking, it's 3.30, I need to be at the venue at 4.30, and 70% of the work is not done. So I sat down on the floor crying. Anyway, the food was awful, honestly. Was it genuinely awful? Well, for me it was awful because I cook it so much better, but yes. I think I didn't know I that that's the experience. Yeah. I didn't know that, you know, when you cook for a huge number, it's a different thing. Yes. Uh, so, but anyway, I pushed, I pushed, I burned one dish, but I took the food. There was food on the table there. I was one hour late, but it was fine. I think the food was okay, but Petra, I think she knew that I was trying very hard. So she did offer me to meet her after two weeks and do two hours consultancy. How do you spell that? Consultancy. Yes, for free. Because normally she charged for that. And that was great. Was it? A huge support yeah. from her. Yeah. I'm still in touch with Just her now. Just two hours worth of, of yeah. her words. Advice. She yeah. told me about the best. She is the first one who inspired me and, um, and helped me to understand that when you establish a brand, you need to show a bit of your personality because it's you. She made me think about, okay, the food is not just about a product that yeah. you serve to people. You yeah. need to tell people about where does this dish come from? Because I did archaeology in Jordan, and now I'm thinking to do further studies about the history of food. Oh my gosh, I love the way that it all ties together. It, do I want just to have a place where people come and eat their food and just go away, or provide them with an experience where mm. they learn something about this dish? So when they go, they remember the experience and come back. But till it's so inspiring listening to <laughs> Thank you. Your, well, the way that you came from a, from a different culture, nobody here to support you, and from a Google search, you, know, you just seem to have made so much of your of your life and, and yourself, and such an inspiration. Thank you.